you doing? <whistles> Look at this stuff. Beautiful mossy boulders. What do you think is my favorite thing about this rock combination right here? Beach, what do you think it is? Moss. Well, that's really cool, but that's not it. Beach, what's your favorite thing about this rock combination? They match very well. That's exactly what I'm talking about. These two rocks are one rock, and the only reason they're even separated is because water broke that down over the years. That's what I really like about these combinations of rocks. They go together so well, you can just see that this was all one rock. That's called rock marriage. It's gonna be a pretty wide waterfall coming down through here with a very broken edge. I'm probably not gonna get water coming over here because it's actually a little bit higher than this is. Depends on how high the flow is, which I'm okay with that. Because any water that doesn't come out over here, which would be pretty cool because it would hit this and do fun stuff. Any water that doesn't come out over here is gonna come in here and do crazy stuff. This is gonna, I'm actually picturing it kind of going around this point because it's a little bit high. So water coming in here, water coming off of here, water coming down here, hitting this and just splashing out through there. This is gonna be a really sweet fog. And that's not the only action happening over here. I'm setting another big framing boulder over here and I'm putting a spillway in here. So we're gonna have water this height falling down there. That's gonna be like a 28 inch waterfall, maybe even 30. Woo! Okay, close, 30 inch. I'll probably bring it down some. And then, if that isn't enough, we have our biofalls over here. I'm putting another spillway in over here. This is gonna be a complete five to nine. So we can do pretty wide, uh, pretty wide falls. There's gonna yeah. be a lot of water coming out over here. So here, here, and there. It doesn't matter where you stand in this backyard, you're gonna see some awesome waterfalls. Thank you for attending the marriage ceremony of Mr. Rock and Mrs. Waterfall. I'm happy to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Waterfall Rock. Everyone clap. OMG. This is Mr. Mr. Rock. Sorry, nobody what? attended their wedding. This is what? Yeah, all the viewers are attending their wedding. <laughs> Okay, so what we have here in this giant hole is all our filtration for a koi pond. This is known as a bulk, and I have water coming in from my pumps into this centipede. This is the centipede piece. This is just the snorkel where you can uh, put a clean out pump down to clean it whenever it needs cleaned once a year. So we're gonna put fill in with uh, this special river gravel to its level. And then we're going to put one layer of the small aqua blocks across just so it never plugs up down there. That'll create a void space underneath there. And then above that, a foot of this gravel and then a foot of 2B gravel is going to go in there. So two feet of gravel and that's going to provide filtration for the koi pond in addition to the biofalls. Uh, we would have not needed to put the biofalls in if we would have made this thing a little bit bigger. but. We were pushing for space up here, so we made the size of our bog a little bit smaller than normal and then added a biofalls. So this pond is gonna have plenty of filtration with those two working together. So this is what's providing the filtration for the pond. We're gonna get this thing in yet before we leave tonight. to show you how we were gonna do our plumbing today, but somehow in the hubbub of the day, it slipped my mind. So today, I showed you yesterday how we put the centipede in and the snorkel and how water's gonna come in there. We did the overlap today. So basically the basin liner overlapped 
down behind these framing boulders. So when water fills up, it's gonna get, tomorrow we're gonna foam. It's gonna fill up into this pool, keep building up, keep building up, keep building up until it reaches the height of that spillway and then it's gonna spill out. Basically what this spillway is, is a low edge in her basin liner. So when it fills up, this is the first place it's gonna go. It's gonna run out there. I'm filling the basin right now up here. You saw yesterday, this is a three foot deep, 10 foot long, eight foot wide hole and it's full of uh, gravel, which is filtration for the pond. We also stuck in a little vault up here. It's gonna house a pump. I didn't do the plumbing to that yet, but this is what the pump's gonna connect to. And we're gonna feed these bubbling rocks that are sitting on top of the vault. It'll add some more height to this feature. It's just lots and lots of water going on this project. These are core drilled boulders. We drill these with, um, it's a big masonry bit and uh, then we take our two inch hose and stick it up through there. I'll cut those off tomorrow closer and silicone it, a bead around here so the water doesn't go down through there. So what that three inch line does, it comes over here and I have a manifold where two inch lines come off of it. And now each one of my hoses, each one of my bubbling rocks has adjustability. If I wouldn't have valves, it would all come out of the low rock and nothing would come out of the top one. So you can mark these, label it small bubbling rock and I can adjust it. So once we turn it on, we'll be up here critiquing these until we get the flow of these boulders exactly the way we want. This is a pretty smart setup. I have it all buried in gravel so you can't see it very well, but we have a lot of other bubbling rock kits where you'll be able to see those if you uh, search Tussie's bubbling rock kits. It's basically that three inch line and then we have two inch hoses coming out. This is all one spot where you can get to all of your valves, easy to adjust. And if you decide, you know what, I don't like how this looks anymore, I wish I had more water coming out of this boulder, you can always pop off this lid and adjust. That way you don't have to remember where you buried the ball valve and it's probably gonna be under a boulder. And when I'm done, kick some gravel over it, boom, it's gone. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of perspective what kept Deej and I busy today. I am going to, in addition to have bubbling rocks here, I ran an extra feed in here and I'm gonna put a rock in here and make a little waterfall come out in between here. This will be a deep pool. I'll probably put a light in here and we'll have water spilling out here. Very similar to what we have over there. On either side of this, what do you call it, an entrance? That, you know, the thing that, there. That thing right there. On either side of that, we're gonna have bubbling rocks that are gonna look pretty much exactly the same. There's one that's finished. There's one that's gonna be running tomorrow. We need to do a lot of foaming and detail work and you know, moss work and the pretty stuff tomorrow. We added one more thing today. I tucked a little spillway in here. It's back in there, it's hidden. I'm gonna do some makeup on there, maybe some stump work, some logs, some driftwood, some moss, all the fancy stuff. This will be a little pool in here. It's gonna build up and spill out over here. Not sure what I wanna do with this corner yet. Something cool. So, yep, tomorrow we're probably gonna have water running here. If we can get everything cleaned if, and filled up. If we can fill it. We're starting to run water tonight already. But yeah, that's gonna be the hold up tomorrow. We're gonna start doing the edge work, run the lights, the gravel, the gravel pockets, all of that stuff. I think we could have it run tomorrow night if the pond is full. We also need to pressure wash the pond and rinse that. We always work in mud, so our stuff's real dirty. And we wanna try to get some clear water. So that's what we got done today. And uh, that's the plan for tomorrow. See you guys in the morning. Okay guys, and we're back here on hopefully the day that we can get the water feature running. It's gonna depend on how fast we can get water out of that garden hose. Should maybe just get a pool truck in. But anyways, I'm gonna cover um, how we foam waterfalls. I've received some questions on this. Uh, how do you guys do that to make water go over your falls instead? Of, if you have a poor foaming job, you'll plug in your pumps, it'll pump all the water, and you don't see very much coming over the falls. The reason for that, it's all going behind the framing rocks, behind the spillway rocks, and underneath and coming out in the bottom of the pond instead of over the top. We use foam, it's not waterproof, but it does direct the flow of water. It seals it off pretty good, and it lasts for a long time. Like, it actually seems, once you get a good foam job, it only gets better with time. It plugs up with debris and stuff, and we just start framing it, foaming along the back here, between the spillway rock, so that I don't have water going down in there. 
And uh, I should actually put in a little chunk of rock there so I don't have to foam all that up. But I'll foam all along here and all along the bottom of this framing boulder. The reason I can't just foam up against here and call it good, and if I'd foam that all shut, we'd be done, right? Except what happens is water comes underneath this spillway rock and it, even though I pinch up liner like this, and it seeps along there and comes in, instead of going over the waterfall, comes back here and either creates a leak or then runs into your gravel pocket that you created. So what I'll do to seal that off, I'll foam all along the bottom here, underneath this rock, up against here, and then I'll foam a wall up here until I'm higher than water like the spillway. So now water can come behind these boulders, underneath these boulders, and it'll wreck into here. It can't go out around because I've, I've sealed it off there. So I have a foam bead that runs against the liner all the way around this rock on top of the framing boulder, stream boulder, all the way along here, all the way along here. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll run along over here and bring it up against the liner. There's one that I already did. And then behind that foam, instead of having dirt, like I said, foam isn't waterproof, it will leak some. Instead of having dirt, I'll have gravel the whole way down. This pocket, this gravel pocket will go the whole way down to the, bo to the bottom of this framing board. So that when my water leaks through here, because it probably will, not much, but a little bit, is gonna leak through here. And instead of running out into the flower bed, it's gonna go straight down to the pond and stay in the system instead of leaking out. I know it's water that's not going over the spillway rock, but I, it's not water that I'm losing. It's not gonna create a leak. There you go. Um, if you do that, when you're done to test it, throw in a garden hose. If your pool fills up and you'll get most of that garden hose over the top of the, of the spillway rock, you know your framing job is good. If it's not gonna hold a garden hose, you should check to see where it's leaking because you, you'll want it to hold at least a garden hose. If it holds a garden hose, good job. That's a good foaming job. I'm gonna foam more carefully. I was cruising pretty good. You have to watch these folds because water can go underneath these folds and just slip its way underneath that rock and come out over here instead of going over. These folds, I try not to create them in the first place, but you always get foams. I stick my tip down in there and it'll really foam that up good to make sure I don't have water getting down those cracks of foam, of liner. So there you go, hopefully that makes sense. All the way along here, or here I'm gonna have gravel because that goes the whole way down to the bottom. The reason for that, I already explained that, is because if I have water that seeps through here, I want it to go down into the pond and not out in the flower bed. We'll do that on the backs of all framing boulders. We'll do it up here on that side and on that side of the framing boulder so that if water leaks through the foam, it goes down and into the stream instead of out into the flower bed. Leaks prevented and your waterfall looks good. I lied. I told you if we would have the water full, we could run it today, and that's not true. We do have the pond full of water, and look at that. So we finally talked our suppliers into washing our gravel for us, and now when they wash it and we rinse it, we get crystal clear water on a startup, which is, has been a thorn in my flesh for who knows how long. So maybe this one, as soon as we plug it in, we'll have clear water. So we did all the little detail work today. Deej spent a long time doing foaming and mossing and working in all these cool stumps and hiding up the spillway. And we have a little bit of work to do here. Oh, he put in a bunch of lights. We have lights on there. We have lights on here. If you want to do one of these projects and you're thinking maybe you could save cost by not putting in lights don't do it save your money until you can afford it to do light to do <laughs> save the money until you can afford to do the lights because they are worth every bit it just adds a really awesome element so this thing's all lit up we have lights on all the waterfalls got a couple lights in the pond Deej worked in a spillway rock out coming out of the bubbling rock so there's how that works we foam that all off in there and it builds up into a pool and spills out here. So we create a waterfowl of bubbling rock. I spent most of the afternoon doing what I didn't want to do, but what Deej didn't want to do either. And since he's higher in the ladder than I am, I did it. Just tell that works for some reason. I ran water for autofill and I ran conduits and pulled wire for electric. And I put in these cool little landscape posts. By the way, that's the way to bring electric to your waterfall. They're brown, 
They don't look obnoxious. They're not a wooden post. And when you're done, they're small. You can mount all your stuff on them. When you're done, they're small enough that you can put a fake rock over it and boom, disappeared. So Monday morning, I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna close off the rest of this ditch. We're gonna mulch it. We're gonna plug it in. It's gonna look awesome and we're gonna be happy. By the way, that looks like Niagara Falls. Don't you think, Deej? Where? I mean, it's a lot smaller than Niagara Falls, but look, like the, the Horseshoe Falls, it's eaten out like that. Okay, so see you guys on Monday. Okay, welcome back. Happy Monday morning to y'all. We got about an inch of rain over the weekend. I had perfect conditions to do the dirt work, and now I don't anymore. I'm wishing I would come up on Saturday to do it. But anyways, this is going to be awesome. I'm just ready to plug this thing in. I've been plugging in ponds for seven years, and I tell you, there's not this moment never goes away. It's exciting every single time. I cannot wait to see what we created up there. So I'm plugging it in. Okay, here we go. One pump, two pumps. Let's turn them up again. Now we're gonna have to go up and adjust the out. Is it awesome already? You don't hardly even have water. It's already cool. Woo -hoo. Dude, that's gonna be awesome. <laughs> no! Our pond was full. Well, not quite full. <laughs> Shoot! Well, we'll be back in a few minutes. Not enough water. Boy, I do not even know what to say. I have built a lot of waterfalls over my ears and each one I build up is completely unique and I absolutely love it. And every time I plug one in, Deej says I say it's my favorite one ever. But this, this, this time it truly is. This is out of this world. This thing has turned out beyond anything that I've ever hoped. It's a combination of beautiful rock that we have to work with and it was just I just had the right boulders on this project. There's some skill involved and there's certain elements of it you just simply get lucky. And this turned out out of this world. Thank you so much for following along on this build. I love to um, share what we do and hopefully give uh, tips that are useful to you if you ever want to try to build one on your own. And um, if nothing else, I just like to share what we create for your enjoyment. So let's turn around and look at some of these things I'll talk about what I was thinking when I was building, the parts that turned out the way I anticipated, and the parts that I just got lucky out on. If I stand back there on that deck and look at this, this is probably one of the most naturalistic builds I've done in a while. There's just the right combination of, of sheet falls and the right combination of splashing rock, and I don't, I don't know, but there's something about this build that looks like something you would see in nature. Let's stand back and look at that on the deck once. So from this viewpoint, there's just off to your left and off to your right, there's so much to look at, it's hard to take it all in. Let's talk about the waterfalls. Let's go look at those and um, I'll show you what we got. My favorite thing about this waterfall is this overhang and the amount of water that just drips out over here is so awesome. I anticipated I'd have water coming out over here, but I kind of figured it would be more of a sheet and left of a drip and I'm glad that it's not. I like that drip. It looks very natural. This brings some water out to the front just like I talked about when we were building it because if I had the whole pond back in here it would be a little bit too hidden. Uh, this just brings it really out in front where you can see it well. Another thing I like about this fall is there's pretty deep water here where it's falling and this has a there's probably an inch of water built up here, so there's a lot of volume coming over here, which gives it a really deep, roaring sound. Super cool. On this one, you get this beautiful sheet falls that, that's what everyone pictures when you say waterfall. It's cool in itself, but it's not the only thing that makes this awesome. I never, I never figured we'd get this much water coming out over here. Very happy with the amount of flow that these pumps produce, but I like, just the wet dribble that comes over here. And there again, I have pretty deep water here where it's falling in, which generates a real deep sound. And this uh, lighter water, it's not such a heavy thread. It makes a different noise. It just, it's waterfall music. It's like different chords. I don't know, I'm not a musician, but I like the sound of it. I have been hoping, but I was scared that it wouldn't work. 
that I would get water coming off of here, which would really create, you know, a circle. But I just don't have enough flow on the pumps. It's unfortunate, but it's still awesome. I like that there's this. That water is a sheet falls, but it's not a sheet falls the whole way to the bottom. I like that it crashes in there and just creates more action. This is pretty neat coming off of here. I like how Deej made it land in that uh, stuff. You planned that all along, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> that was the plan. I just wasn't sure if it was going to work out. Well, you got did. it, man. It looks really, really awesome. <laughs> and here again, I've talked about sideways action, and this is what I'm talking about right there. So I have water going this way. I have water falling in from the side. Uh, to build that, you just simply have to look at your rock and look for those little jagged points that are going to make water shoot out the side. Once you build a few of them, they're pretty easy to recognize. You can get the same thing right here. I have a little uh, piece of rock that goes over there and you know that's going to make the water shoot out the side. I like water that's coming in from multiple different directions. So yeah, this was a win. I really enjoy building with this rock. It's native to this area. It looks natural for where we are and I like all the character that's on it. Another thing that we were looking to create in this stream, a lot of our um, water features have deeper pools with slow or no moving water. But we choked this stream down, we foamed off these rocks to try to create a current, and we made it a little shallower because we want it to look like a mountain stream with a lot of action. What that does is, even though we have a pool here, it's moving pretty good. We have a lot of current in this narrow thing. I like how it rips around that point. So that's how fast it's going, it's cruising. There again, to create that, all you have to do is um, when you build something that points out to the stream, like you set a rock in here, you have to foam along this edge or else the water is just going to go through it. If you foam these boulders so that water can't go underneath it, it forces it to rip around here. And the other thing you're going to have to do is make a shallower pool. If this was 10 inches deep, we wouldn't get this current. But we've made it shallow. It's only maybe three inches deep and that that's what creates that fast moving water. All right, best part of the build's done. Now we gotta go play in the mud, try to clean up this disastrous yard, put down some mulch, which is gonna look really awesome, and um, get out of here. So I am just getting ready to cut in this boulder into the uh, boulder that we had cut to fit in our plate to get rid of this cut edge i'm going to cut this rock into that and make it look as one so i'm going to stick you guys on time lapse and you can watch and then afterward i'll show you or reveal it to you and you can see how it looks so there it is one rock made whole again and here's the other side that i did earlier So there you have it, pond foam and a little bit of moss goes a long way. One last tip about rocking into a pond on your last, your top shelf. That's gonna be the boulders that are exposed. You want to make sure that they're tall enough that you can bring the liner up high enough so it doesn't leak. So let's say this boulder that I'm looking at right now, see here's the berm, here's how high my liner needs to be, at least four inches above water level. Let's say this rock was only this high. I don't know if you can see that. If this rock was only this high, and then I would have to set another rock on top so it's high enough so that I can bring my liner up high enough. What happens then is when you get one rock set on top of another rock, you see that ugly seam. If you look at the rocks on this top shelf, but every single rock you see sticks out over the top and goes down out of sight in the water. We don't have two rocks st stacked on top of each other where you'll be able to see the seam. I like to stay away from that period, but if you're doing it below water, it's not very visible. If you happen to have a too low rock along the edge that's visible, that's you're going to be able to see that and it doesn't look as well. So there's another tip for uh, when you're rocking in the pond. So, in summary here, I'll give you three points when you're rocking in your pond that are gonna help your pond look well and last long. 
Number one, excavate your pond and shelves. Number two, make sure that the boulders you set on the shelf stick up at least two or three inches above the top of the shelf so that your gravel doesn't run off. And number three, make sure that the boulders on the top ring, the top shelf, are high enough so that you don't have to stack rocks on top of each other on, on the top shelf. For waterfall construction, uh, remember how we talked about setting the spillway, picking out two framing boulders, setting those, and then setting your spillway behind the framing boulder so that it looks like you eroded its, its way between the two framing boulders. Those are some key points that will help your pond, your waterfalls function well and look aesthetically pleasing. So hopefully that's uh, you learned something and if you um, have any questions that we didn't cover or it wasn't clear, I do struggle a bit to explain some of these things. Feel free to reach out in the comments and either Weston or I will reply to those and try to answer your question as best we can. Thanks for following along on this journey. Uh, we enjoyed having your presence as we transform this backyard. Tussie Landscaping is based out of Hollidaysburg Altoona area. We uh, do these beautiful water features, we do um, large outdoor living spaces, hardscapes, patios, retaining walls as well. We travel, we like to stay within two hours of that area, but for the right uh, water feature project, we will travel uh, farther. If you are interested in um, having us come to your backyard to build one of these, and you're outside of that two hour range, feel free to reach out to us and we'll see if we can work with you. Um, if it's the right kind of project, we would travel for it. Blah, blah, blah. I know you hear this on every single channel, but if you like this kind of content and you would like to see more of it and you'd like to support the channel, don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button and the notification so that you don't miss any of our videos. We're releasing every single Saturday. Lots of cool stuff going out. Let us know in the comments what you think about this project and if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.